Hi and welcome to a new section of the channel. In this series, I'll try to learn a bit about FPGAs and share my experiences with you. Just to clarify, I'm not an expert on this topic, so I'll probably make a lot of rookie mistakes along the way. I looked into several FPGA manufacturers, and the reason I chose Ephenix is that they offer a simple, beginner-friendly development kit. I think one of the issues with many FPGA manufacturers is that their development kits are often overly complex and expensive. That's great if you're working on something advanced, but when you're looking for something straightforward and affordable to learn with, your options are pretty limited. The board I picked is called the Fire Ant. It's based on a Tryon 8 FPGA in an 81 ball FPGA package. It's about 51 by 18 millimeters in size and comes with DC voltage sources of 5V and 3.3V. A 33.333 MHz crystal for the FPGA's internal PLL. 35 general purpose input output pins. 3 push button switches, although I'm not sure if all of them are general purpose for simulating digital input. A few user controllable LEDs. 8 megabits of NOR flash memory, probably used to store the FPGA configuration. You can program the board in two ways via high-speed USB 2.0, or through a JTAG connector. Here's a link to the board's manufacturer, Crowd Supply, but I actually bought mine from Mauser. On the website, you can also find the board's specifications that I mentioned earlier. It's worth noting that the board comes preloaded with a program, which is demonstrated in this video. Basically, it lights up the onboard LEDs at various speeds, adjustable via one of the push buttons. The software used for this board is called Affinity, and I'll share more about it as I go along. For more details and examples related to this board, there's a GitHub repository, which I'll explore in the next video. It's also mentioned that only the top two push buttons are for general use, while the bottom button is dedicated to resetting the FPGA. Lastly, the board includes two rows of pin headers, making it easier to access the GPIO terminals. I'll proceed with the unboxing of the board. Here it is, the one I bought from Mauser. I'll leave a link in the video description. The board is protected in a plastic bubble wrap sleeve, designed to cushion it against potential impacts during transport. We can see that the manufacturer is crowd supply. Now, I'll open the anti-static bag to take out the board. Inside, there's a blue paper that contains a code to register the product with Ephenix, so I'll make sure not to show that information. Here are the two rows of pin headers I mentioned earlier. And here it is, the Fire Ant board. This is its backside and here is its front side. That's all. Thank you very much for watching the video.